So in this part of the video, we're going to be talking about glycogen synthesis, but specifically the feedback regulation of the synthesis of glucose. So in our bodies, glucose reserves get used up quicker during intense physical exercise and fasting. These reserves are then replenished through food. To increase the amount of glucose in these reserves, it is synthesized from pyruvate via gluconeogenesis. So gluconeogenesis is in many ways just a reversal of glycolysis. It builds glucose from pyruvate, whereas glycolysis breaks down glucose and produces pyruvate, as seen here. So they pretty much use the same enzymes, just in a different order. Um, and there are a few steps of glycolysis that are irreversible, which means you can't just run them backwards, so like as they are. So gluconeogenesis is one of the ways that it gets around that. Um, and it catalyzes just a new set of reactions to bypass those steps. So glycolysis step number three, which is what we are really gonna be focusing on today, is one of those irreversible steps. So the enzyme phosphofructokinase uses ATP to force, this is the enzyme, sorry, and it uses ATP to phosphorylate fructose 6-phosphate uh, into an intermediate fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Um, and that, eight, that intermediate is then, high, it goes through hydrolysis reaction to remove a phosphate, um, and this is in gluconeogenesis, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, and this is different than this. They're not the same. Um, and then more. So basically there's, Glucose going to pyruvate here, and then pyruvate going back to glucose via this process. So how a cell decides to do that is with feedback regulation. Um, and here it's a positive and negative feedback loop because there are metabolites that bind to allosteric sites on the enzyme, and it regulates the activity of phosphofructokinase. So phosphofructokinase is activated by a presence of ADP and it is inhibited by a presence of ATP in the body. And this kind of feedback loop is where the products of a chain of an enzymatic reaction reduces or stimulates its own production by altering the activity of an enzyme, in this case phosphofructokinase. Um, so when there's more ADP in the body, glycolysis is going to take place. And when there's more ATP in the body, gluconeogenesis will take place and produce more glucose. And here it will synthesize more glucose, thus giving you more energy and thus replenishing your energy. Um, so that's essentially how it works. Hello, welcome to the second part of the video. In this section, we'll be examining a series of the process of glycogen breakdown. In the first step, glycogen phosphorylase by which our body introduces the addition of phosphate, which will cleave the hydrocytic bound in the non-reducing end. This process happens because it bypasses the usage of ATP, which makes this energetically favorable. And also, the concentration of the enzyme phosphorylase is much higher than the concentration of glucose 1-phosphate. In the second step, glycogen remodeling, the glycogen must be modified by the debranching enzymes to continue the process. So the first enzyme we'll be using in this process is called transferase, which takes three of the last four glucose units of the branch and moves them to the non-reducing end. The second enzyme is called hydrolase. It hydrolyzes the last glucose off, results in a free glucose. As we can see there, the linkage is broke Last but not the least, the last step of the breakdown glucose 1-phosphate conversion. The glucose 1-phosphate is catalyzed by phosphoglutamase, which converts all glucose 1-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate. As you can see from the drawing, the phosphate group that is originally attached to the carbon 1 end has been reattached to the carbon 6 end. And that's the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching.